You must forgive. I must pray. I must go to the church. I must love God. I must share with others. What is happening is no, no more if. It is must. It becomes, it, 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 it is not for our salvation. It becomes the fruit of our salvation. You know, we are not from here trying to attain. We are now here trying to spread. You understood the point? Jesus, Jesus, when he said it is finished, he has finished. Human attempt of attaining salvation, he has given us power. Now what we need to do? We need to receive. Many people today don't receive his finished task. They try to, they still keep trying. They still keep trying. This say, old covenant is finished. Don't be under the law. Be on the law. Fulfill the law through me. Don't, don't even reject the law, but be on the law. Fulfill the law through me. And that is, that is possible. The power of sin is finished. The power of brokenness is finished. The power of pride is finished. The power of self-righteousness is finished. The power of impossibility is finished. Even today, anyone can come to God and say, Lord, help me. And they are being helped. Now, the question I, I want to ask, what you would like to see in your life finished? He has finished all the power of enemy, all the power of this earth, all the power of sin and shame and Satan. You as a person, what you want to see is finished. I have a sheet of paper and pencil. Can we can we distribute to all so that you can write it down? What you like to see, it is finished in your life. Maybe there are a couple of things that are there in your life. You feel like you are in bondage. You feel like I really want to fly higher. I really want to do good. I really want to um, um, to, to explore. But this is something that is still bringing me back. This is something that is still there in my family. This is something that I really want to see it is finished. The, the piece of paper that you have, write it down what you want to see finished. The particular fear that you have, the particular challenge that you have, the, the, the sickness or the, whatever the thing that you have you want to see it is finished. Write it down and then we are going to nail it on the cross. Uh, when we pray, we are going to nail it on the cross so that we will see literally it is finished. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. And you come live also one more. When you write it down, as first one say, accept. You know, you need, you need to really uh, make it sure that that particular thing I want to be finished in my life, or in my family, or in my attitude, whatever it is. And believe what you're writing, you are confessing to the Lord, and on the cross it will be taken. Maybe that is, uh, maybe that, that may be a sickness in your body, or maybe that, maybe some of the problem in your life, or maybe some attitude in your life, or what you feel um, in, around you that God should take care of it. 
it is the plan of God, it is the will of God that He will deliver us. He don't want to stay as a as a slave to our sin. He don't want us to stay stagnated of any circumstances that you are. Or the breakthrough that you are dreaming, but there is something that is causing you to stay behind. And you want to see you are free, write it down that I want to see that particular thing is finished in your life. Or that particular thing should be done, gone from my family. As you're writing, I would like to lead you in a prayer. You can also pray for yourself what you're writing now. Lord, I am praying as my friends by completely trusting in you and believing in you that accomplished accomplishment on the cross is for eternity. Anyone who believes, he receives it. Lord, as a church, we are receiving all the things that are written on the paper. Lord, as we are writing on the paper, we are believing and we are speaking it out, Lord, that this attitude is going to finish. This particular sickness is going to finish. Lord, this particular problem that we are facing is finished on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we believe and we declare from the depth of our hearts, oh Lord, it is not something we are doing as a ritual. We are doing it as a step of faith. And we are claiming, proclaiming your victory in our lives from all this that are written on the paper. Lord, later as we stick those on the cross, we would, we would see those things are taken on the cross and buried in the tomb. Thank you, Lord, for this assurance. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that in you we are victorious, we are free, we are healed, we are accepted, we are forgiven, we are more than conquerors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As you have written it down, you have prayed, prayed over it. Later, we are going to stick it on the cross and we literally see it, it is gone in our life. Amen? Amen. <laughs> the last one, the last saying, Luke 23, 46. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen. When he said this, he breathed his last. Amen. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The first saying started with Father, and the last saying, the seventh one also is starting with Father. He's, he's addressing to the Father, saying, that, he's saying, God, without you I can't begin, without you I can't finish. That's the lesson for us, that without God we cannot have a good beginning, without God we cannot have a good ending. Everything that we do, we need to start with God, we need to end with God. It was spoken in Psalms 31.5. It said, into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Today, he has committed his spirit. What was that? It was the, the part of God. It was something that is very, very important. All of us have his spirit. We need to commit our spirit in God's hand. Then we will be able to worship Him in truth and in spirit. When we commit ourselves to Him like Jesus did, He was resurrected. So many people, today what they do is they commit the spirit after somebody dies. You know, they pray for the peace of the spirit, for the shanti of the spirit, after the person is died. Now, Jesus is teaching us, it is not after we die, it is before we die. Before we die, as we are alive, we need to commit our spirit to God. It is good because when we commit our spirit, when in our acknowledgement, in our full knowledge, what happens? We know that our spirit is going to live for eternity in the kingdom of God. Be committed. It says we need to learn from this. We need to be committed in his commitment. He was committed to commit his spirit. Today, so many friends, relatives, family members of our family, have not accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior. Let us commit them. So that as we commit ourselves and walk with commitment, they also will have this commitment. When Jesus committed his spirit, what happened? He breathed his last. 
he was able to rest well. He was able to rest in peace. All of us have this assurance in Christ Jesus. When we put our trust, our death will be peaceful. We will lead our life in peace. We will accomplish peace in our lives. We will have joy of the Lord. Can we take this moment? Can we take this moment of committing our lives as Jesus is committed? And let's pray, Lord, I want to be committed to your commitment. That is what is the passion driven commitment. From his passion, he committed. So we commit ourselves to lead others to Christ, to be a blessing for others, to be a channel of blessings to people. And in our commitment, we will see the hope of resurrection. When we commit ourselves today, we will resurrect from any challenges, any pain, any dangers that we are facing. I pray that any circumstances that we are facing, you want to see victory, you want to be resurrected, commit yourself. Commit yourself, your plans, your purpose, your life, your everything, committing to Him. Let's pray today. Let's all commit ourselves. Let's all stand together as we commit. As we commit ourselves to the Lord, let us commit ourselves. From the seven sayings of Jesus, we have great benefits. We have received this benefit according to His covenant. This is the blessings according to His covenant. Our Good Friday become Good Friday because of His covenant. He did not accidentally spoke in these words. He spoke according to His covenant. Father, I pray with thanksgiving that because of Your covenant, we are now committed to Your covenant. And we are now declaring we are victorious. We are declaring we are more than conquerors. We are declaring we have the presence of God with us. We declare that we have received your forgiveness. We receive the Lord. We are, we are having peace and unity in our family. We are declaring the Lord that you have made us one with you. I believe and I proclaim the Lord that we have been experiencing now. All the things are finished. All the dangers, the great danger that was there was sin, shame, curse, pride, detachment, separation. All these things are finished. Now we are one with God. We are united with God. We walk with God and we see our commitment increasing. Yes. Lord Jesus, I pray for each of us who are standing here from my left to right. From, from front to back. I pray for every single person on every pew. I pray, Lord, that each one of us will experience victory from the revelation that we have received from the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May, us, may we all be seated. As we do a closing prayer, before we do a closing prayer, let's participate in the communion where He has begun the new covenant. Surely, He has